Hi everybody. Today I'm going to cover part two of this project on the millivolt meter and I'm going to cover off the software for this project. But before I do that, I just want to have a look at uh, a few of the details on the data sheet as that influences how we put together the software. So let's do that first and then we'll go and have a look at the software itself. Now on page four of the data sheet for the LTC 2400 we have the timing characteristics for this IC and I just want to point out a few of the uh, parameters here. And the first one is, uh, we'll be using the internal clock frequency, it has actually a built-in clock to do the conversion, and the internal clock frequency is running at 19.2 kHz, so we'll be using that. Uh, although there is an option to use an external clock, we won't be doing that, we'll stick with the internal oscillator. Now if you remember from the circuit, uh, we had an FO pin on the IC and depending whether we take that to ground or to VCC plus 5 volts will depend whether we select the 60 Hertz notch filter or the 50 Hertz notch filter. Now we'll be selecting the 50 Hertz notch filter therefore uh, the FO pin will be connected to plus 5 volts and if we look across here it tells us the uh, time it takes then for the conversion to take place which is 160 milliseconds. So we'll have to allow at least that amount of time in our software for the conversion to take place, uh, converting the analog voltage input to a digital um, stream of information. Now the other point I want to uh, point out here is that the other oscillator we'll be using today is the oscillator that we need to clock the serial data out of the IC and I'll be using um, the oscillator from the Arduino, the external oscillator from the Arduino to do that job. Now remember the Arduino is running at 16 megahertz and as you see here the maximum allowed uh, clock frequency is 2000 kilohertz it says here which is 2 megahertz. So we're going to have to divide down the 16 megahertz clock frequency of the Arduino to at least 2 megahertz so it functions correctly but I'm going to set it probably initially at 1 MHz, so we're well within its specification. Now the next thing I want to have a look at is on page 11 of the data sheet, and that is to do with the 32-bit data stream coming out of the IC. Now the first four bits of this data stream are status bits, and the following 24 bits is actually the data that we want to capture, and then the last four bits are what they refer to as the sub-least significant bits, which we can dispose of later. So, if we have a look, first of all, at the, uh, the four most significant bits, which are the four status bits, bit 31 is what they refer to as the end of conversion indicator, and that will tell us whether the IC has completed the conversion or it's still converting the analog to digital signal. And uh, the way it does that is that it gives you a signal on the data pin of the IC. So if you monitor the data pin of the IC, and at the same time you take the chip select pin low, you can see whether that data pin is high. And if it is high, it means that the conversion is still going on. And if it's low, it means the conversion is completed. So we're looking to see when that goes low, and then we know the conversion is completed. And we'll use that in our software to tell us exactly when it's completed so we can then start to transfer the data out to the Arduino. The next bit, bit 30, is simply a dummy bit, so we can ignore that. The uh, third most significant bit, bit 29, is what they call a conversion result sign indicator. And basically that will tell us whether the input is either a, a positive or a negative voltage. We're not going to use that on our project today, so I'll leave that alone. And then finally we have bit 28, which is an indicator whether it's, it's uh, extended the input range, so whether it's exceeded the input range uh, of this particular device. But again, we're not going to use that today. So the one we'll focus on is bit 31 to tell us when the conversion is complete. Now finally on the data sheet on page 12, I just want to have a quick look at the output data timing. Uh, because this shows us the signals coming on the chip select pin, the data pin, and the clock pin from the IC. And basically what we can see here is that if we take the chip select pin 
low, it then monitors what's coming out of the IC and if we then look at the information on the data pin, remember what we said there, if the data pin was to be high it would tell us that it's still doing the conversion. If the data pin goes low we know the conversion is completed. So in this case we can see here the data pin has gone low. We know the data pin uh, has now completed the conversion. So we can now start to clock the data stream out to the Arduino. So we now start the uh, clock frequency. Uh, the clock frequency we'll be using there is the divided down clock frequency. I'll divide it down to 1 megahertz from the Arduino. And then that'll start clocking out the data on the leading edge of these clock pulses until we've completed all the 32 bits. When all the 32 bits have been clocked out to the Arduino, then the data pin goes high and stays high. The clock frequencies will stop. At the moment the chip select pin is still held low for a period of time and the conversion process starts again. So that is the basic operation of the IC. Right, well now let's have a look at the actual software itself. Right, well here we have the first few lines of our program. Uh, this is just a little bit of housekeeping, so these are just comments. And uh, all I'm doing here is just uh, indicating which pins I'm using for the uh, liquid crystal display, for the RS pin, the enable, and then the four data pins there. The read-write pin on the LCD is permanently grounded. Um, the LTC 2400, I'm just indicating here I'm using pins 13, 12 and 10 data pins on the Arduino for the clock, the data and the chip select pins. And then finally, you can see at the bottom here, the calibration button we're using, I'm using the data pin 2 on the Arduino. So that's just pin 2. So this is just purely for information uh, when we refer to the rest of the program. So let's have a look at the start of the uh, program itself. Right, well the next thing we have is the uh, really the, the, the main start of the program and the first thing we do is we include two libraries so we're including the SPI library which is the serial peripheral interface library to transfer the data and then we're using the liquid crystal display library that's followed by setting the pins for the crystal display library we then uh, set the pin for the chip select for the LTC 2400 at pin 10 and we also set the calibration button pin to data pin 2 i.e. 2 there. The rest of the information here is really variables in different formats we have long integer and float and the ADC read is just a variable I'll use for the reading that we've taken from the uh, LTC 2400. Uh, the integer there cal setup is the initial uh, logic level for the setup button which is logic zero. Uh, we then have a float there which is the that will be the calibration factor at the moment it's zero but that will change as we calibrate the unit. Then the voltage there, a float, that is the final voltage that we'll be using to display in digital format to uh, up to six decimal places. We then have VREF, which is the voltage reference source for this uh, project. We are using 4.096. If you were to use a different voltage reference, you'd change that number there. Uh, the next thing you'll see there is a string. I've got a string called V, and the reason behind that is that I want to be able to print on the display uh, either volts, millivolts, or microvolts, depending on the reading that we're, we're taking. So I want that to be able to change and I'm going to use that in a string and I can change the variable in that string to print either of those options. The next thing we have a trim uh, and that is a trim facility. We're not going to use it initially but if you wanted to adjust the calibration a little bit later on we can add a factor in there, a number in there, which will then trim the calibration of the meter. We then have samples, this is a constant I've set at 4 and this is the number of samples that we're going to take of the reading to take an average before we then display it on the LCD. 
and then we have CT. CT is the uh, conversion time. If you remember when we looked at the data sheet we said it needed around 160 milliseconds to do the conversion. We've also got some overhead in the software here so I've set that initially to 190 milliseconds which should give it enough, enough time to do the conversion before we start to uh, clock the data stream out. And then finally we have integers relating to D and D is really the number of decimal places that we're going to show on the LCD and what I've decided to do here is depending on whether it's showing volts, millivolts or microvolts I've, I'm altering the number of decimal places and this is up to you. You can change these numbers and put whatever numbers you wish but I've set them initially to show six decimal places when it's volts, two decimal places when it's millivolts and no decimal places when it's in microvolts. So that's what I've set it to, but you could change these. So that's the first part of the software. So let's have a look at the, uh, the, the next section. Well, this is the next part of the software. This is the void setup. So this is the setup procedure. And the first thing we're doing there is setting the pin mode for the uh, chip select pin uh, to be an output. And then we're writing to that pin and taking it high. Remember we said that when we take the chip select pin high, it disables the uh, analog digital converter chip, so it, it stops anything coming out. We then follow that with SPI begin. That just simply initializes the SPI, uh, the serial peripheral interface, and then we set the bit order that it, the data comes out of the IC, and we're going to select to have most significant bit first. We then set the data mode. There are several data modes on the SPI in the SPI library, and we're setting it to data mode zero, uh, and that simply means that we'll be clocking the data out on the leading edge of the uh, clock pulses, uh, and then we have the uh, set the clock divider. Remember, we said that when we looked at the data sheet, we had to divide down the clock frequency of the Arduino. And here I'm dividing it down by 16. So if we divide it down by 16, then our 16 megahertz clock on the Arduino is down to 1 megahertz, which is well within the specification for the ADC. Uh, you could actually change that figure if you wanted to alter the, the rate there. So you could have it at 8, which would give you the maximum, which would be 2 megahertz. Or you could take it to 32 or, or 128 or whatever. So you could, you could alter that within certain range. We then set the uh, liquid crystal display, we initialize that to tell it that we're using a 16 uh, column by 2 line display. We then set the cursor on the display to the top left hand corner, that's uh, column 0 and row 0. And then we uh, print on the top line there, I've just printed a, a, a welcome message, I'm, I'm just printing Skullcom with some spaces in front to central that lies that but you can print whatever you can change that to whatever you want to put there we're then moving the cursor onto the second line uh, at the left hand side there with that command and then we're printing hobby electronic I then have a three second delay before clearing the display resetting the cursor to the top left corner and then printing millivolt meter on the top line of the display now the final part of this setup procedure, I've got a little loop here which is looping round five times and all this is doing is reading the data stream from the ADC. Uh, it's not doing anything with it, it's just reading it and then effectively throwing it away, reading it, doing it five times. And the only reason I'm doing that is that if there's any corrupt data at the beginning when we first switched on until it's settled down, I'm just ignoring that data. Uh, in reality, I did find that if I took that little part of the software out there, uh, it still worked perfectly okay. So it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference, but I've put it in there just to be on the safe side. So that's the void setup uh, part of the software. So let's now move on to the next section. Right, well, this is the main loop of our software, and so it's the void loop. And the first thing we're doing is checking to see whether the calibration button is pressed. So that's all this is doing here. It's just checking the uh, pin, data pin 2 to see if the button's taken high. And if the button's being pressed, it's, it's taking the uh, program off to the calibration adjust uh, subroutine and then returning. 
If the button hasn't been pressed, it just carries on with the remainder of the program here. So if we carry on, it then sets the uh, LCD display cursor to the second row, first column. So that's it in readiness for printing the digital uh, display, the voltage. And then we have a loop here, which I'm using to take samples, sample readings of the data streams coming out of the ADC. So what we're doing here is we've uh, set the uh, integer there i initially, and then we've set the uh, a long variable there called sum, which I'm going to sum up the totals, uh, starting off at zero. And then we're looping round. And remember, we set our samples to four at the beginning of this software. Uh, so this is going to loop round four times, and it's going to read the data coming out of the uh, LTC 2400, the data stream, uh, and that's done by a little subroutine there called the SPI read, uh, which I'll cover uh, shortly. Uh, and uh, that is then, uh, ADC read is then equal to what's coming out of the, um, the analytic converter IC. Now remember then we said we had a time period to allow it to do a, a conversion. So before it, can, it has to do now do another conversion, and on the data sheet, remember, it, it took 160 milliseconds to do that conversion. We have a little bit of an overhead in the software, so we set our figure to 190 milliseconds. So that's what that CT is. So there's a delay there to allow sufficient time to do the next conversion before it loops round again. But before it does that, it puts the reading into a variable called sum. And as it loops round again, the variable sum just adds the next reading to it. So it's adding up all the time, one to the other, one to the other. So that becomes the total of all the readings that we've taken. Having completed that loop, then the sum total is then divided by the number of samples, and that'll give us the, the average reading. And then remember we said that uh, we had those sub-least significant bits that we need to dispose of. Uh, I left them in to do the averaging because I think it, it could make the averaging more accurate. But now that we've done that, I can remove those sub-least significant bits. So that's what this uh, command is doing here. It's shifting the uh, data stream four places to the right and getting rid of those four uh, uh, sub-least significant bits. So then we, re we end up with just our 24-bit stream. Having done that, uh, I then add some calibration in here if it's needed. And then finally here, we uh, convert the, the output then, this, this whatever the sum is, to a float reading of a which I've called volts. And that is what's then going to be displayed on the LCD as a, as a, a decimal reading to decimal places. I'll just move, the, uh, move it up so we can see the rest of the... Uh... Right, well then on the next line of the program, we have volts equals volts times 10. And remember that on our hardware we had a divide by 10 resistor network at the beginning to reduce the input voltage. So we need to take account of that. So I'm just therefore multiplying that by 10. But if you had a divider which had a different factor, if it was a divide by 100, then you'd simply change that to a divide by 100. So it's something we could use later as an upgrade if we wanted to switch in different ranges. We then have our final voltage reading. Uh, and what we then do is we take that voltage reading to, to get the, the exact reading we want to show on the display. Uh, we multiply that by the reference voltage divided by the number of possibilities of that 24-bit uh, um, uh, ADC. So that's that 16,777,216. That's the possible combinations. Uh, and that will give us the final voltage reading that we'll put on our display. Now the remainder of the software here is simply looking at that final voltage reading for the display and deciding whether that's a microvolt reading, a millivolt reading or a voltage reading. So all we're doing here is we're saying if the voltage is less than 0 0.001 of a volt then we know it's a microvolt. So what we're doing there is we're multiplying it by a million. Uh, we're using the UV as the string variable on the display and we set in the decimal places to what we set for the UV. And then that's what's displayed on the uh, LCD.
Uh, if it's not that, it checks, then checks if it's uh, less than a volt. If it's less than a volt still, then it must be millivolts. So in that case, we're multiplying it by a thousand. We're then uh, setting the string variable to print millivolts on the display, and we're also setting the decimal places there for the millivolt range. And finally, if it's neither of those, it then uh, prints the uh, as, a, as a normal voltage with the decimal places, as we said earlier, was six decimal places. It then sets the cursor to zero. One, that's this, the the second line that the, starts at the left hand side, and then prints the voltage reading, and D is the number of decimal places on the display. We then print a space. We then print the uh, string variable V, which prints either uh, microvolts, millivolts, or volts. And finally, I, I print a few spaces there, uh, and that just gets rid of, just tidies up if there's any. Thing left on the LCD after each uh, each display, it just clears that. So that's just a few spaces. So that's the uh, the main loop of the software. So I think the next thing we need to look at next is the little subroutines. I've got two subroutines. One is used to do the read of the digital data from the ADC, and the other one is for the calibration button. Right. Well, just before we look at the subroutine to uh, transfer the data out from the ADC to the Arduino. I just want to explain uh, the basics behind that because the Arduino can only accept 8 bits at a time. So if we have a 32-bit stream of data we have to cut that up into 8 bits at a time. That means we've got 4 bits of 8. So let's see how we can do that. So here on the whiteboard here I've got uh, a representation of a 32-bit data stream and you can see at the beginning and the end of it I've got some uh, digits in red and the reason behind that is that the the four bits, the most significant bits here, remember they're status bits and at the end the least significant bits are sub least significant bits which we need to remove later. So the first thing we need to do is to send out the first uh, eight bits of the data to the Arduino and then, in addition to that, we somehow have to get rid of the status bits. So let's see how we do that. So we take the first eight bits. And that is then sent out to the Arduino. And then what we do is we AND those bits with a fixed binary number, which is four ones, four zeros, which is OF in uh, hexadecimal. And if we AND that data with that, the net result of that is what we get out is that. So you can see what we've done there by using that fixed binary number and ANDing it with the data coming from the uh, ADC, we've stripped out the uh, four most significant bits there, which are the status bits. So the result is just the data. So now we've got our data and what we now need to do is shift that data eight places to the left. And if we shift the data eight places to the left then you have eight zeros coming in on the right hand side. What we then do is we take the next four, uh, sorry, the next eight bits of data and this time we use the logic or function with the previous data we have here, so that's odd with that, and if you use the logic OR, the result is that uh, that information would effectively be put there. The next thing we do again is that we shift the whole data again eight places to the left, and then we've got eight zeros coming in on the right hand side, we then take the next eight bits of data and shift that in to the Arduino. And again, we use the logic OR function here on those two. And if we use the logic OR, then 
the net result is you end up with that data on the end there. And then finally we shift it one more time and then we have eight more zeros on the end. We take the uh, last four bits of our data, we use the logic or function once more and then the result is that that is then added on to the end. So that's how we transmit the 32-bit data stream, 8 bits at a time, to the Arduino. Right, here you see now the subroutine that is responsible for sending out the data stream to the Arduino. Uh, it's called the SPI underscore read and that's what we call in our main loop. Uh, the first thing we do here is we set a few variables, a long variable for the result, that's the, the rolling result of the data that we're uh, transmitting and then B is the eight binary bits each time. Uh, we then take the uh, chip select pin low to tell the ADC that we're ready to start transmitting the data but before we actually send any data we want to just check whether it's completed its conversion so that's what the next line does that is uh, checks whether the conversion is completed it checks bit 31 if bit 31 is still high, it knows it hasn't completed the conversion, it's still doing it, so we, we have to wait. If, uh, if bit 31 goes low, we know the conversion is completed and we can then carry on uh, sending the data stream out. So that's all that is doing, is checking that. I'll explain that in a moment. We then send out the data stream, remember, 8 bits at a time. So we send the first 8 bits out. With that command there, we're using the SPI transfer function. And uh, the way that works is the Arduino has to send a signal to the slave device, in this case the ADC, and says, look, I'm sending you something, you send me something back. That's the protocol. It has to tell it it's sending something before it gets something back. Uh, so we just send it some random data there. It's not used. And uh, then you get the, the 8 bits sent back to the Arduino. Uh, we then OR it with the four zeros, four ones of that binary that I showed you before, which is OF in hexadecimal there. And then that gives us our result. And then we, we, we move that result, remember, eight places to the left. We then transfer in the next eight bits, and this time we use the logic OR function uh, to add it on to the previous data stream. And that is then the result again. We then take the next eight bits in and do exactly the same use the logic or again and finally the fourth uh, and do the same again uh, each time moving it eight places to the left and that means that we end up the result at the end of the day is that we have our 32-bit beta stream now in the Arduino. We then take the uh, chip select pin high that then disables the ADC and then we return back to the main program. So that's the, the, the uh, subroutine that simply takes the data from the ADC and uh, feeds it out as a data stream to the Arduino. Right, well I'll just try and briefly explain what the outline of the code is there, which is simply checking whether the conversion in the ADC is completed uh, before we send out that data stream. And remember, uh, we're looking at bit the most significant bit, bit 31, which is the indicator that tells us whether the conversion is completed. And if that is high, it's still ongoing conversion and when it goes low we know the conversion is completed. Now we know that if we take the chip select pin low and monitor the data pin of the ADC we can look for that uh, high or low signal and that's what's going to D12 of the Arduino. Now in reality although the Arduino labels that pin as data pin 12 when it gets onto the board it goes to pin 16 of the microprocessor chip which is in fact port B4. And if we look at port B here, we've got the representation there of 0 to 7 in terms of bits. And if we take a 1 and and that with the port B, that's what that would look like there. But instead of anding it with the 1, we shift that 1 four places to the left. And then we and it with that. And you can see that that is now lined up with uh, port B4, which is what we want to look at. And if they're both high, it gives you an output, it's true. So if they're both high, it's true. So the conversion is still going on. We want to know when it's not true, i.e. the conversion's completed, and therefore we've put the not uh, logic there, the exclamation mark. So it's not. So when it's not true, it knows the conversion has completed.
completed and it carries on with the remainder of the program. If it's true, it, uh, it, skips, the, it skips the remainder. So that's how we check whether the conversion is, uh, is completed. Well, the last part of the uh, software is the routine for the calibration, subroutine for the calibration. Little intro screen there when you press the calibration button which says calibration, short the input leads, make sure the input leads are shorted. We should be getting a reading of zero with the input lead shorted. So if we then go through a loop to check the reading, if there's any reading there, that is an error reading and that's what we use for calibration. Uh, so I'm doing a similar loop there to what we did in the main loop in the program and then taking that, uh, 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 the average of that and then renaming it calibration or cal in this case and that's the cal factor, the calibration factor that when we return to the main program is what we use for calibration purposes. So it simply then prints that calibration factor on the screen so you can see what it is and then returns back to the main program and before it does that it uh, makes sure that we still have on the top line of the LCD display millivolt meter. So that now completes the software for this project. Right, we'll just have a look at the uh, the data stream going from the uh, ADC to the Arduino and I've got the oscilloscope now connected to the uh, chip select, the data pin and the clock pin. You can see the chip select pin goes low there. Um, initially the uh, data pin there is still high so the conversion is still going on but as soon as the data pin goes low we know the conversion is completed so it's completed at that point in time and then we start sending the clock pulses here the purple ones shown there eight at a time so you've got four groups of eight clock pulses there and that's then uh, uh, sending the data stream eight bits at a time to the Arduino at the end of the uh, transfer you can see that the data pin now goes high and stays high and the clock pin goes low and stays low and then after a short wait the chip select pin goes back high again. Let me just expand the, uh, the waveform and see a bit more closely. There you can see the beginning of the uh, signal there and you can clearly now see the eight clock pulses there then a little gap then another eight pulses there and you can see the relationship between the chip select the data and the clock pulse. You see we've got a little bit of noise on there at the moment and uh, we can probably have a look at that later. Right here we can see the uh, completed module again and I just wanted to point out that the divider network I'm using on this for the moment I've got a couple of uh, high tolerance resistors there 100k in series with a 10k multi-term preset for trimming because uh, the other high tolerance resistor I've got there is a 909k resistor so I need to trim it to give me a true uh, divide by 10 network there uh, but you can make your own choice regarding how you want to have the divider network at the front front as long as you have a divide by 10. First thing we'll do is we'll uh, connect the battery and uh, we'll go through the calibration process. So when the meter is uh, finished its initialization you see we're reading there at the moment with nothing on the input 6.8 something of a millivolt. Uh, that's probably just noise that we're picking up there. So what I'll do now is I'll short the input leads and then I'll press the calibration button. So it now shows you the calibration factor there that it's going to use in the software and uh, you can see now that the reading has gone right down to around 60-70 microvolts. So the next thing we'll do just to check that we've got our front-end divider network uh, correctly set for uh, divide by 10 I'm going to use the uh, reference source we have on the board. Remember we have a little test pin there where we have access to the 4.096 volt reference. So if I now connect the, uh, the input 
to that reference source and you can see at the moment it's showing 4.113 and the reason behind that is that uh, the divide network is obviously out of tolerance so what I'm going to do now is trim the preset and uh, get down, trim it down to uh, our 4.096 4 there we are. So you can see there on the reading now we've got 4.096165 of a volt, uh, which I'm happy with. And what I'll do next is I'll feed the um, input with a 5 volt reference uh, from a reference source I have, just see how accurate it is. Alright, just fit in there 5 volt reference and you can see there the reading at the moment we're reading 5.00042 or 45 of a volt. So I think I'm quite happy with that. Right, finally just to get some sort of a comparison, so I've connected the unit together with my Keithley 2000 uh, bench meter to the same 5 volt reference source just to compare. And you can see the Keithley is showing as 5.3027 of a volt and the little module we've built is showing 5.30696. So it's fairly accurate and I'm quite happy with that. So it certainly compares reasonably favourably with the Keithley which is calibrated. Right, I've just connected the uh, both units to uh, a 1 volt uh, reference source and uh, as you can see the Keithley is showing it down as uh, 0.99743 of, of a volt, so that's 997 millivolts and the little unit we built is also showing it at 997 millivolts so again I'm quite happy with that. Right well that concludes part two of this project, the software so you should now have everything you need if you wanted to have a go yourselves at building one of these modules the front-end resistor network, the divider network, I'll leave entirely in your own hands whether you decide to invest in an expensive divider network or whether you simply build one up using good quality resistors and uh, trim it with a multi-turn trim pot. Now I've had a lot of good comments about this project so what I may do is decide to uh, do a part three and cover off some of those comments and that will also give me the opportunity to look at adding some additional features like increasing the number of voltage ranges etc. But in the meantime I will put a link down below with the software and I've added a lot of comments on that and also a link for the component layout on the front of the board. In the meantime if you found this of interest please give me a thumbs up. Have a lovely Christmas and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.